pav mic and pav mic. Okay, I'm gonna make sure I'm up and running. And then I will start. There we go. All right. We're getting really close to finishing this thing, and I want to get into some other stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this out today, I think. So let's see where I want to start. Kind of want to do something to her head here. Let's go ahead and duplicate this off. Go into polyframe. Delete lower, go into solo mode here. And let me take a slice. Is this going? Is this going? Hey everybody, thanks for showing up. Okay, we are on. Let me know if the sound's okay. Let me move this a little closer to my mouth, I guess. Turn that off. There we go. <laughs> I can't sleep. What are you doing here, man? What's up, Spicer? Thanks for showing up. Cool. All right. So my brain hasn't really kicked in yet, but we'll go ahead and start. We'll go ahead and slice here. Um, I don't know, what do I want to do? Let's see if I got anything cool to look at. Uh, any sort of like headdress or no? I don't know. We'll figure it out. So probably something to go over her ears and her face here. So I'm just going to slice right through here. I guess that'll work, so I'm going to go ahead and do a control shift, isolate this poly group, go ahead and delete hidden. And let's go ahead and just do a quick uh, remesh of this. We'll go over to Z remesher here, and we're going to go to half, adapt to size down to zero, and just hit Z remesh here. So we're going to go from 44,000 down to about 22,000. I think I have X turned on, so it'll go ahead and be symmetrical as well. Yeah, so I'll just keep hitting this. And you know what? I don't need those ears built in. I just need an indication of some lumps where those ears need to go. So if I go ahead and smooth this out now, uh, as Zero Mesh is evaluating this mesh, it'll go ahead and take those changes into consideration. So now I just have a nice little uh, head sheath here that I can either go in here with Z Modeler, Q Mesh, Polygroup All, and just kind of pull this out, and I can kind of move this around, or hmm, or I can cap this thing off and make it a little bit easier to work with. That way I don't have to worry about um, interior faces and stuff like that. So, and actually probably save me some polygons here. So I'm going to go ahead and just bridge these edges right here. And then here I can either try going to like close ABC. Whew, okay, uh, where are we at? Edges. <laughs> and then we want to close convex hole. We can try that maybe. That'll work. Fewer polygons the better. I'm going to go ahead and control shift click all of these, let me see, there we go, control W, make that all one poly group, and now I can go ahead and do a crease poly group, and then, and now if I want to move along these surface normals to kind of inflate this Q mesh poly group ball, we can start Q meshing, and then we hold that shift, and kind of pull those out, oh man, Australia, thanks for showing up, everybody doing okay, oh cool man, I'll have to check that out, Spicer, uh, from meshed up, and Spain, geez. Um, I want to say the text and the whole interface did kind of change a bit. It's a, it's a little flatter, and uh, I th oh, there is a place you can change the text. Where was that? Actually, hold on. Let me give me a second. Let me pull up my notes here. There's I oh, that's a good point. So if I go to YouTube here, if you if you are new to R8, I have a playlist here for what's new in R8. If you go to my YouTube playlist. I haven't finished it yet. I gotta still go over def deformers and um, what else? I gotta go over deformers and just a handful of other little things. But if I go over here to my notes and grab my notes here, we can talk a little bit about the new R8 stuff if y'all want. Uh, do, do, do. Am I, uh, there we go. I uh, notice I can't seem to download your video from the last time. I will look into that. Usually what, um, what I'll do, I'll do that today. When I, uh, after I get off here, I'll go through and I'll create highlights and maybe that'll be a little bit easier. 
Cool. You know what? Let's go over the deformers now while we're, while we're sitting here. Um, just, a, just a real quick one. So I'm going to go in here, and this is going to be stuff um, you might have already seen before because it's not like I'm the first person to do this here. But if we go into grab a Z sphere, make poly mesh 3D, um, and we hit W here. I can change this on the fly. So if I hit this gear and I go in here, it's like, you know what? Let's try the sphere 3D. And now you can have access to all the startup, you know, the initialize options here. So you've got H divides, V divides. You can kind of dial these in, um, size this way, and then size this way. So it's kind of like a coverage. Um, and if you don't want this, you can go in here and grab another one. Or if you do want to keep this, you can hold down control and tap and mask it. And then when you bring in another um, primitive, it'll just add to it. Now that when it adds the primitive is going to add it where the pivot is for your um, gizmo is. So if I hit W here and just move this out or hold down alt and move this pivot out. Uh, now when I go back through here and I change this up, I can change it to a cone and uh, it should start here. Okay. Yeah. So it's going to be the center of the object. It looks like, so we'll change this to a ring. There we go. So now the center of that ring is going to be right here. And then we can go through here and do the scale um, S radius coverage and all sort of s divides v divides all that cool stuff so as you continue to go you can unmask control tap the mask go grab another one we'll grab a polysphere instead of a sphere 3d and uh, then if we like this we can go back into our gizmo and you can either hit um, w again to kind of swap between these or you can go into your gear and like switch between you know the primitives of the gizmo and then you can go ahead and scale this down and there we go. So now we've got a bunch of primitives going on and you can start modifying these. Um, if you want to start using the deformers, you can go in here and you can go down here to like say the extender and you can go ahead and start extending these things. Um, so the extender basically just splits along one axis and then splits along another axis. And then above these you have um, a scale. So you can kind of scale these things out. Then you also have uh, extender this way, Z size this way. And then over here in the corner you have um, if you want to put Y, X, Y, and Z symmetry on, and then above those you have X, Y, and Z resolution. So you kind of dial in those type of things as you're going. And then once you're happy with that, you can go in here and you can go accept, or you can reset it, or you can delete that deformer, and then you can start another one. If we like this one, we'll go ahead and accept it. And then now you can feel free to go ahead and, uh, what are you, um, trying to think. One cool thing is, um, we grab this one here. Let's 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 try something. So I'm going to grab these faces here. I'm going to hold down Control Shift and then Control Shift Alt and drag. We'll just grab this little group here. I can do Control Shift S to shrink. And I'll just grab those ones here. And you know what? I'll just leave those as well. I hit Control W to make one poly group here. Now if I hover over this one, I can do like a poly group. Uh, we'll do poly group island as our target, and then we'll do checker, and we'll go ahead and just checkerize these. So now I can go through here. And let's do like an inset uh, polygroup all. And now all these light blue ones, we can kind of inset these. Let's polygroup inset polygroup all. It should just do the light blue ones here. Hmm. Inset. Wonder why this one wouldn't be. Let's see, let's go back. So when I do this polygroup checker, I'm going to go ahead and do, to overwrite, I'm gonna tap Alt. Let's see, Control W. Polygroup, Island, checker. Alt, 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 Alt. There we go. Interesting. Um, inset, polygroup, all, region, not region each poly. Oh, you know what? Turn off X. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So I can go through here and QMesh Poly Group All. Let me go ahead and pull these in here and keep modeling here. And now if you want to, you can just throw an extender right on top of this one again. So we go back into W, go into our gizmo, throw another extender in here. And now we can just kind of pop these things up. And these keep these kept our X and Y resolution uh, slider. So you can turn these down if you want to. We can throw an extender through this way here change the resolution or size or scale of that one. And uh, what else we got in here? So if I go W and click the little orange. Oh, there's another thing. You can grab this blue um, little dot. Oops. Grab this little blue dot and you can move where that extender ends up cutting through. So you can just kind of dial that in. 
Um, if we go back into here, where are we at? There's our gear. Uh, what else we got? We got the deformer. Multi-slice is kind of like the extender here. So if we go to apply creasing, you can turn that on and off as we're doing our multi-slice. And then we can go through here and do our, oops, let's do X resolution. So you can kind of dial in some resolution here and dial in some resolution in this direction. And then you can change the width. So you can kind of slice through here, slice through here. And now again, you can just move this blue dot around to kind of see where you want that slice to end up going. Um, over here, you can either crease or uncrease that. And I want to do X, Y, and Z and apply creasing. Let's go back. Let's go ahead and delete that one. I want to go back to multi-slice. I feel like I'm missing something here. So we'll go here and then width and then resolution and then Increasing, no. Give me a second. Let's try extender. Okay, so we'll go ahead and extend this and apply creasing. Oh, it's this one back here. So this one is also inflate and deflate. So that's the one I forgot. So in the extender, you can also go through here. So let's go ahead and do an extender this way and an extender this way. And let's go ahead and add a little bit oops, of resolution over here. So we can add, that's creasing. There's our res. So we can add a little bit of resolution here. Let's go ahead and add two lines. Dial it in, there we go. And then on this one here, we'll add a little bit of resolution. There we go. And now we can use this one to inflate and deflate. Um, down in here, so you can kind of inflate that out. You can get lots of cool things going, obviously, with uh, this kind of thing. Uh, you can hit D, and then I had D turned on, so D and Shift D is going to cycle through our uh, dynamic subdivs. You can go in here, and then you can always go back, you know, and just hop out of this or accept what you have, and then go in here, and let's do our like crease tolerance here to kind of crease these things up, and all that good stuff here. So, um, hey Yarv, thanks for showing up. Cool, awesome. Uh, oh, can you show us how Extender actually works in Slice? Um, yeah, <laughs> hope that made sense. Um, that's, that's where we started. Uh, let's see. Uh, I haven't learned a lot. I have learned a lot from you, but I don't use ZBrush now. CG ruins our eyes and health. Maybe you're getting a great amount of money, but are you enjoying your life? I'm not getting a great amount of money, but I feel like I'm enjoying my life. I can't complain too much. Um, make a video on ZBrush to Substance Painter workflow. More specifically, can you set IDs for different UV islands in ZBrush so SP recognizes them as separate objects? Yeah, go to my YouTube channel here. And I do my ZBrush to workflow. If you go to the live stream highlights, so this playlist specifically, you scroll down, uh, get to where you start seeing the, uh, actually I go from ZBrush to Painter to Sketchfab if you want to do that. Uh, we talk about, and it, it's, well, I, I do it there. I also have it on my, let me see, Gumroad and Cube. Cube brush. So if you go here, uh, if you go to the Reptile Creature series, the go to the part two and a lot of that goes over my ZBrush to all sorts of engines, uh, renderers, not engines, but uh, mostly renderers and a lot of different baking options and stuff like that. So if that's interesting to you, you can check that out. Uh, I'm trying to think where else. I know I've, I've, know I've done it more than that. Uh, so in that playlist there. Oh, here's another one. So if you go to the speed modeling and texturing, this one is kind of just a speed just kind of getting something into Painter real quick, just for like iteration purposes, throw it into game and kind of um, go through that. I, uh, this one doesn't break it down as far as I usually do, uh, but I do go over that in the um, live stream highlights. Oh, thanks Unicorn Dev. Glad the videos are working out. And if I ever miss any questions and stuff, uh, just keep throwing them up here. Keep uh, keep shouting them out and I'll, I'll 
I'll grab them. Hopefully. Again, like I said, my brain isn't necessarily working right now, but <laughs> we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, so that was that stuff. Now, th these ones here, like twist is pretty straightforward. You you got the twist here, and you can twist it here. And all of this is based on where your pivot is. So if I go out of here, and we hit W to go back into our gizmo mode, and I go like, you know what, I want my, I hold down Alt, and I want my pivot to go like this way, and maybe back here. And then we hit W to go back into or go back into gizmo mode here, and then we change it to another twist. Now our twist deformer is, if we hit W, you can kind of see our deformer set up where our object is. And so now we can kind of twist from those different directions here, from the back and up. Um, so twist is pretty straightforward. Taper is another pretty straightforward one. You can go through here and you can kind of taper this way. Now why I'd want to taper from my gizmo being in that direction, I'm not sure. So I'm going to hit um, W, go back to my gizmo, hold down Alt, and I'm going to reset this. And you can go to unmas Unmasks Mesh Center. Uh, you can also hold down Alt and uh, we can just kind of tap along the back here just to kind of set that. And then we can go to, um, I wonder if we can just, actually let's do... You can also do home because I know when I created this thing, it put it right back in there. Now we can hold down Alt and we can just kind of push it straight back. So now when I go into here and we do say a taper, now this one will behave a little bit more like what you're probably expecting. If you want to taper back to front, you can kind of just set your pivot back here. And now we can kind of go like, what kind of cool mechanical thing? You can step up to this pyramid and it's really, I don't know. I don't know what this thing is, but. Uh, taper from this side, all that good stuff. Uh, what else we got? So here we got twist, taper, uh, multi-slice and extender we already went over, flatten, uh, kind of the same deal here. So I'm gonna go ahead and accept this one and we'll go into flatten. And now you can just flatten from, whoops, from this side here. So now we're kind of pulling to that direction. If you push in, you can flatten down in this direction. You can push in from that direction or you can pull out and you can flatten to that line there. So that's kind of interesting. And kind of flatten this side and that side. Uh, what's this thing over here? Slice topology? No, yes. Okay, so with slice topology, I'll turn polyframe on and we go in here and flatten. If we go in here to yes and no, um, it looks like it'll go ahead. So the no one just kind of pushes that geometry up. The yes one looks like it cuts a slice right around there. So that might be useful if you want to use that edge ring for something. Uh, different and what else we got X symmetry yeah so you can do X symmetry and stuff like and again if you just hit W go back into your gizmo here uh, if you want to slice from a different direction just hold down alt and just move your gizmo in whatever direction you want and then if we do the flatten I should say flatten not slice uh, now when you pull down we're flattening from that angle so pretty neat oh you know what did, yeah, I did hold that out. So yeah, we flatten from that direction here. Let's go ahead and reset that. Let's go back into our gizmo here. So we got flatten, extender we talked about. Uh, deform we haven't, bend curve we haven't, bend art we haven't. So deformer is like a lattice deformer here. So uh, if you've used FFD or a lattice in Maya, it's going to look really familiar to, to you. So you can do X divides, Y divides, and V divides, and Z divides, X, Y, and Z. <laughs> Man, my brain is gone. Uh, smoothness is when you start deforming this thing and uh, also X symmetry. So if you want to like just deal with parts of this mesh and you know everything's going to be symmetrical, you can go ahead and do, um, we'll go ahead and do symmetrical X, Y, and Z. And now you only have to worry about this one corner. So those are the only dots that are going to show up. So from here, it's just a matter of holding down control. And if you do, just like in ZBrush uh, 4R8, if you control, uh, hold down control alt, it'll unmask whatever you select. If nothing was masked, it'll unmask that area. So now you can just go through here and we can do, um, just move around for that. Uh, do we have, we should have X symmetry here. Hmm. Oh, you know what? Okay. So we have, there's symmetry and then there's one is parallel, two is mirror. So probably I want to do, I'm used to doing two, so I don't want to do parallel symmetry. I'm going to do, um, the symmetry I'm used to, which is mirrored symmetry. So now we can just go through here, hold down control, alt, grab these corners. And now I can just kind of modify the shape as needed. And just like the other deformers, if you reset your pivot to a different direction, it'll go ahead and uh, deform like that. Um, so now you can control drag and tap to go ahead and bring, uh, invert your deformer points, your lattice points. And then you can control drag. Um, I don't unmask all of them, so go to this direction, hold down control, alt, grab these lines here. And then again, if you just want to move in one axis, you can kind of just pull these things out like so. And there you go. And then we have this totally radical, weird.
weirdo shape that we can now use as an insert mesh brush. Or since we're in the live booleans, let's go ahead and grab this one. We'll turn it around. We're going to go to brush. Let's talk a little bit about this stuff too. So let's go to our, mm, 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 mm. we got chisel wrecked. So if you haven't checked this out yet, this is really cool. So what you can now do is see these meshes up here. You can turn these to alphas on the fly. So now you can have brushes that have multiple alphas built in. So no more of the, like I have here, if you guys haven't watched the videos yet, you go in the brush uh, under military. I have a bunch of like brushes like this that just have one alpha in them. So you can just, oh my gosh, you can make so many brushes with just one alpha in them and then your brush count just goes through the roof. But now you can make one brush with alphas being, uh, geometry being converted to alphas on the fly. So let's go ahead and add this one. Um, so we can go to this direction. And now if we go to our brush settings, create, there's a lot of create options in here. If we just want to throw one at the end of here, we can go uh, brush from mesh and that'll go ahead and throw this one in here. So when I select through here, it's going to grab that alpha and I select this one. It's going to go ahead and make this an alpha. Uh, another thing we can do is if I hit the comma key, no, if I hit the B key, uh, let's go ahead and do, I just want to do an insert mesh brush. So, you know, we'll just make a new insert mesh brush. So brush, um, create insert mesh new. And that'll be an insert mesh brush this way. And if I want to add to that, I want to do an insert mesh brush this way. So we'll go ahead and create um, we can just do from mesh and now that I have an insert mesh brush selected, if we do from mesh, it's not going to make them an alpha. It's just going to make it a selectable insert mesh brush. Of course you can hit M and it'll go ahead and pull up this little window. You can select them. Uh, if you wanted to do a brush, if you go to BI brush insert, uh, the Boolean one here, you're going to notice a lot of these are double sided. Um, if I want to switch to these meshes, I can hit W and then just like grab through here and you can just kind of replace your mesh. So you don't have to go to geometry, modify topology anymore. And you'll see a lot of these are double sided. So you can just use either side. Um, if I did want to do that, let's hit W or let's hit Q and then hit control Z. Oops. There we go. We can go back to our mesh here. Let's step forward one. There we go. Um, if I wanted to do that, I could just go and grab my floor plane here, move this forward. So we're just kind of slicing it, you know, wherever. Let's go ahead and slice it on the thickest part here. I'm going to polyframe mode. Now I can just do a mirror and weld across the Z axis, I'm assuming. Yeah. So that, now we have a two-sided mesh. So if I go back to my brush here, we go to insert mesh. Now I don't need two of these. So I'm going to go from mesh and then this one here, I'm just going to hit uh, delete and then delete again. And now I'm just left with this one double-sided. So now that we have that, if we can go over here to our, oh no, and then ZBrush crash. Give me a chance to come over here. Wow, Switzerland and Germany. How you guys doing? Thanks for showing up. Uh, I do have some videos on Nanomesh. Let me keep grabbing this one here. So probably, uh, where have I gone over Nanomesh before? You know, if you go to the live stream highlights, we go over, uh, just look through Nanomesh in there. And there's also a nano tile. I use Joseph Drust's uh, Nanomesh plugin here. I don't go over everything in Nanomesh, but we can talk a little bit about Nanomesh today if you guys want. Um, yeah, there's, there should definitely be some nano mesh in there specifically. Uh, I need to go back through. I mean, I do go through nano mesh, my intro to ZBrush part two and part, uh, I forget which one it is, probably part three. Um, oh, another thing I did was set up a macro on startup. So I did a macro called path startup and that runs through. And then for example, if I go into edit mode here and go into make poly mesh 3d if i go into my clay brush here and go under auto masking now backface masking is turned on for my clay brush my clay build up my trim brush my h polish so you can just do a startup macro so if you go to macro here and basically what you do is you go to macro new macro actually i can uh, it was on a what was it it was a facebook post where um somebody was asking like how do you you know stuff that doesn't stick like preferences edit um, a line cursor to surface. If you want to come into ZBrush and have Y as your default axis selected, um, th things that don't save with your preferences, config, store config. Basically what it is, it's just recording a macro, uh, which again, is just macro, new macro. And let me find that video for you guys. It's a good one. Let me see. Pavlovich. It was on Facebook. Notifications. Um, Give me a second, give me a second, give me a second. You guys will like this one. Um, too many 
notifications. Uh, <laughs> geez, it got buried already. Uh, da, 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 da. Crap. Can't find it. There we go. Okay. So, yes, yes, this post here. A few more comments. Sorry, sorry, sorry. See more. There it is. YouTube. Open link a new tab. Make sure it's the right one. So, let me get the credit where credit's due. So, Alexander um, Delagrange made a video right here, and this is this will walk you through the startup macros and then adding it to your default startup. Um, some of my options, like I want to go to smooth stronger. Um, this one, I'm pro what I could probably do if you ever want to change a brush that is a startup brush, like one that ships with ZBrush, what you might want to do is instead of like you can change your H, H polish properties and then go to brush save as and then ZBrush 4R8 Z startup Z data um, or no wait, ZBrush 4R8 Z data Z uh, brush presets and now all of these are the brushes that come in to ZBrush by default. So save it in here and that'll overwrite those settings so that way when you bring it in It'll go ahead and switch for you. So that might be a little bit better than like having to switch because my shift brush is doing something weird like, oh, would you want to use your shift brush? And I think it's kind of messing up my startup macro. But uh, yeah, so your startup macro, you can have it run at startup or you can just have a macro with a button that you can sit on your interface and then you can just hit that button and it'll go through and change all those little little weirdo things you want to change in ZBrush. Anyways, um, so we made <laughs> that insert mesh brush, but... Uh, now we made it binge mesh brush, we made it double sided, and at that point all you would have to do since it didn't I you know I can probably just reload that session quick save maybe. Recovered here. Oh you can also see I'm going through the Pablo Munoz rendering stuff. So that's why I, I what I really want to do next time I'm gonna go ahead and try and finish up my sci fi lady uh tech suit so I can go ahead and use that. So let's go ahead and do this again. Brush uh, and you can still hit B create insert mesh new and have that insert mesh brush here. So now we can go ahead and make poly mesh 3D. Go ahead and drag this out. Now we can go ahead and change our depth here. So we go into depth and just put that embed down to zero. So we'll embed right down the middle of this thing. And then you can go in there to split uh, unmasked points. And that'll, what I, if you want to, if, let's talk about this. So if you merge these down and then this, oops, this one here, when you insert your multi mesh by default auto mask mesh insert is going to be on. So two ways you can go about this. When you're doing um, live booleans, you pretty much want this one to be your start group probably. So in that case, what I would do is split unmasked points. If you split mass points, it's going to take your start group and move it down. And then you got to go in here and do the bent up arrow and make that your start group. So when you take this one and then you insert another one on there, it'll go ahead and do that correctly. What I would do instead is do split unmasked points and that'll shoot this down here. Then you just need to turn off the start group. Uh, you can make these both subtractive here, um, turn on your live Boolean render, and now you've got those live Booleans you can go through here and just modify on the fly. Um, another interesting thing is now once we have these, let's go ahead and merge these down. So now that these are both subtractive, as we add more, it's just gonna keep being subtractive. If you don't like that last one, uh, we can go to brush insert live Boolean here. And uh, so any of these that you go ahead and insert on any of these brushes, so we select this one, it's like, ah, oh, it's a cool one, but let's see what these other one looks like. You can just kind of go through here and modify these on the fly so you can kind of see which one will work for you. And there you go. Uh, it'll also maintain, if we want to like scale this up, you can go through and uh, if you hold down shift and cycle through, so if we do any modifications of these things, if you hold down shift, it'll maintain those modifications to your other ones. Um, this is kind of useful if you have, if you want to do like this one here, and it's like, okay, I want it to be, let's turn off our render real quick. Not render here, live render. Um, so if you want to do like this one, and then you can mask this out, and then um, if you want to do, a, do another brush insert here, we can grab like this one here, and then if you hold down shift and drag it out, let's see. So we'll go here, and then we'll grab, um, Another one here. Let me see. 
So let's just drag this one out. And if we hold down shift, it'll go ahead and kind of maintain those deformations on your previous one. So if you want them to all come in squished, just hold down shift when you're going through here and that'll just maintain uh, all of those things. And of course, these are all still live. So you can just kind of do your whole live Boolean thing and we're just kind of moving these things around. Uh, but we never finished talking about the deformers. So let's go back here. Um, cylinder edit make polymesh 3d go here to initialize we'll just do a q cube and we'll go across the uh, x-axis here hit by taking uh, toggling x polygroup q mesh polygroup all hold on shift uh, let's go ahead and do insert single edge loop here hold on alt and then we can just go insert multiple edge loops we can give ourselves some resolution here or you know what if we want something cooler to work on let's go ahead and go to subtool let's talk about z plug in text Vector shapes, new text. Give me that. There we go. Hold on. I'm hitting caps lock and it's doing something weird. So, Pav Mic 20XD6. So, we'll go ahead and hit that one. Now, when we hit enter, it makes a new subtool. So, we can go ahead and turn the original subtool off. If you did want to replace that one, you could just go hit this replace button here. And now we've got some text here, of course. A lot of cool stuff you can do through here. You can choose, you know, different um, fonts. And if you grab one where you know it's going to have a lot of different options in here, like um, you can cycle through them like that. Let's go to Arial. And then you can do like black, bold, italic, italic, narrow. And then you can do the kerning or the spacing here, letting, I guess not that one. But uh, you can do extrusions and then you can do the uh, resolution of this one to make the curves smoother as you go. Uh, you can turn adaptive to make them all a little more evenly cut through or um, not adaptive and then you can add a little bevel to it and then you can do um, the bevel resolution and then once you add resolution this is going to ungrade the curvature. You can bubble it out or you can like carve it in and then you can do vertical, horizontal, all that good stuff. Reverse the text if you want to. Uh, if you also have cool fonts you want to use or even things that are like symbols you can just make really quick symbol stuff um, if you want to do anything specific you can go over here to the new SVG and then you can load in let me see if we still have one on our document or our desktop here um, SVG oh, I don't have one uh, well let's grab one real quick because that's also cool so if I go here give me a second text creator I'm going to go to simpleicons.org, and I'll just grab this podcast one, so we'll go ahead and touch that one, and I'm going to go to my file explorer here, there we go, and now if we go to new SVG, and I go to my desktop, and we grab podcast here, so now we have... Um, star a text a <laughs> thing we made and then we got our svg here so oh that's another thing too with for this you used to be able to if you had one selected you could turn the eyeball off and that would turn all the eyeballs off um now you have to hold down shift and that'll turn all the eyeballs off so little subtool organization so now you've got this cool little thing and it maintained all of our properties here from our text and if we you know what i want to change that change that curvature to outward bubbly there we go so that's a cool thing you kind of mess with uh, if we go back to the text here and we hit W. Now we can go back into here and we can talk about, uh, we already talked about all these ones. Let's talk about bend curves, another pretty um, pretty self-explanatory one. So you can choose when you're in here what axis you want these dots to go, X, Y, or Z. And you're going to see Z is depth, Y is up and down, and then X is across this, this way. And then you can go uh, smoothness, we're not going to talk about yet, but you can change your curve resolution. So you just kind of dial that in. And now every single one of these has a little deformer that you can go through and you can grab these little dots and move them around. Um, you can you can move them along that axis or you can move along this axis, doesn't really matter. So when you're doing this, now when you're moving stuff, you can change the smooth, so it'll kind of smooth the transitions. Um, this one I probably wouldn't use for text. What I would use for text is we'll go ahead and delete that one and we'll go back in here and we'll do like a bend curve. Uh, no, I'm sorry, like a bend arc. There we go. And again, that gizmo pivot position is going to determine where this how this thing lines up and if it's just text then I probably want it just right down the middle um, so now here you can do twist you can do angle 
So you can just kind of dial in these angles and you can do angle and twist if you want to do like a 300, I mean, you can do 360 degrees all the way around a circle like this. You can also do like maybe, hold on shift and we'll just do like 90. Let's go halfway around and then as we do a twist, I'll kind of twist it uh, around a, and again, hold on shift and you can set that angle perfectly for you. Um, you can also do radius if you want to do like small or big. And if you're matching something, if we go over here to append um, a sphere or a circle, I guess we can do a sphere. And then we take this sphere and we go ahead and turn that one on so we can see it. Uh, not that one, this one. So we go ahead and take a sphere here and let's say we got a sphere sitting back here. And now we can kind of match this up uh, to our surface here. Uh, another thing you can use is you can just use Matchmaker. So let's make this sphere a little bit bigger. So we can go ahead and mooch, scooch this down. So you can go through there and dial in your deformers. And in a pinch, you can also, or, or just as something you want to do, you can go BMM and take your Matchmaker brush and just kind of click and drag. And that'll go ahead and conform it to your surface here. If this was a insert mesh brush, so we can go to brush. Let's grab that new insert mesh brush we made. Um, so we're just gonna make an insert mesh brush out of this thing. Let's go around to this side here. Because this is the direction I wanna read these symbols from. That's how I left to right. I'm gonna go to B, uh, create insert mesh append, or you can go to the um, brush menu. Okay, and now if we go back to our sphere, we can tell this brush here, when I drag out, let's grab our brush settings here. When I drag out, go to modifiers here, and we'll do the projection strength. We'll make that crank up to 100, and then as we drag that out, it'll go ahead and project that, kind of wrap the text as you drag it out. So again, see how it's kind of wrapping as you drag it out? Cool, done. So applying details and stuff like that to your mesh um, is pretty easy. Edit, go out of live Boolean mode. There we go. And now we're back. Um, check out these comments real quick. Um, how do you do that to more than one subtool? You just merge them together. Or, I mean, you can, I don't think it works with, so if I have multiple subtools, did I do something weird to her? Oh no, that's her head, that's her helmet. <laughs> Sorry. I was like, what happened to her face? Um, I don't think it'll work with, I haven't actually tried it here, uh, but let's see if we duplicate these things down and I go through here and I just kinda, okay. So if we wanted to do a deformer to all of them, you can, now you can hit W and you can do this uh, transpose all selected subtools here. So if you hold down control and um, control shift tap, that'll unselect all of them. You can control shift single tap all of these. And if you want to just move those ones around, even if you have the subtool selected, it'll ignore it if it has the hatch lines. Um, control shift drag to invert. Oh, I'm sorry, control shift tap to invert. So you want these two selected, control shift tap, that'll invert your selection. Um, you can con also control shift drag to deselect, control shift um, drag to get a marquee selection, control shift drag alt to undo from a marquee selection. So all these things you have available to you. Um, to kind of move all of these things around at once. So let's say we want this one and this one, and then we can move these two subtools around here. However, um, if you hop out of this mode and you start like, oh, now I'm gonna move this thing around and now it's all, everything's hatched and it looks kind of weird, just make sure when you, before you step out of this thing to control shift and drag to unclear that and then go out of that mode. Now, let's say, let's try this, I don't know. I don't know, let's see. Uh, so if you go here, control shift, make sure all of these things are selected. And then I go in here and I do an extender. Yeah, it's only gonna do for the active. So in this case, what I would do is these are all, I can just do a quick uh, merge down or merge visible. Um, and since it's pretty simple, I just go here to the um, merge poly mesh here. And now I can just do it to these multiple here. So now we can go into W and Gizmo's right in the middle here, and we'll just go ahead and do an extender for all of these things. And then once I have that done, I can just go back here to split to, if we do split the similar parts, what it's gonna do is these two, since they have the same vert count, will be added together. And then these two will be added together since they're um, different. So if you didn't wanna do that, let's say these were merged again, so I can just merge these down, which is here, merge down. You can go split to parts, and anything that's not vert welded will be its own subtool. Um, all the split options. You can do group split, but then it's going to split these polygroups out separately from these polygroups here.
So be careful when you're doing that one. Cool. Uh, Fritz says, you can also do the ID bake by assigning color materials to the low-res faces and bake into the painter. For high-res stuff, prefer the ZBrush, Polygroups, and Painter Workflow. Uh, that's a good one, too. You can also do it by material. If you're working high-res in, like, Moto or Maya, you can do it by... It's, it's pretty robust. When you go to bake your ID map in Painter, there's a ton of options in there to bake from. So, same thing as Substance Designer, too. Uh, Graham asks, how are you feeling about ZBrush for right? Pretty good. Pretty rock solid. Minus a little crash we had earlier, but... Uh, so far, so good. I haven't dived too deep into all the new features into my normal workflow yet, um, but we're getting there. Cool. Uh, this is just a Pavlovich workshop stream. Um, if you're new to this stream, let me go ahead and I'll link you. If you go here to these uh, YouTube playlists, you can check out. Oh, I, I've, I've already spammed this, but yeah, here's the YouTube playlist as well as if you uh, so Thursday mornings, I show up here. On Tuesday mornings, if you go to Pixelogic's Twitch stream channel, you can watch. I stream for them Tuesday mornings. You can go through my Pavlovich workshop. There's episodes 1 through 19 of the 19 episodes. Man, Whew, that was a lot of talking. You can check that out. Um, and there's 408, our special insert mesh. Uh, in, uh, in Zebras 4.8, our special insert mesh to sculpt refugee. I'm not sure. Um, maybe they gave me. I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> insert mesh to sculpt refugee. Uh, I mean, you could make your own custom insert mesh brushes if you wanted to have like a refugee insert mesh brush. I'm not sure what that would entail, but that's kind of interesting. Um, Cool, cool. Hey, thanks for showing up. <laughs> I haven't had too many crashes in Zebras 4.8. Uh, I'm not sure what I hit there. And I also am doing some weird startup stuff, so I might strip that out and just have a startup button. We did talk about the startup macro and stuff, so I might just have a button for it in my interface that I load up Zebras and then I click the button. It might be a little bit cleaner. Um, any new add additions to the animation tool set for 4.8? Uh, off the top of my head, I don't think so. But if you wanted to do the animation stuff, it's under the, for everybody else, the movie modifiers. You can go, like, you know, show the uh, timeline here. I usually just use this timeline to, sh to save camera angles, different camera angles. But uh, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do in the animation and the layers that you can kind of mix and match those two. Uh, there's a Joseph Jesse Bush plugin called Startup Master on Gumroad. Yeah, that's so on that. Facebook post I posted, hey, try Startup Master, but now, yeah, it's not going to work with R8. Um, but yeah, okay, okay, you've copied over R7, it works fine. Awesome. Um, I should be streaming on Twitch. I wonder if I need to set, no, uh, I think I check. That's the only one I do check. Pav mic. Did it cut out? Because I should be streaming to Twitch. YouTube, yeah, okay, it's gone. And uh, Periscope. And I wanted to do Facebook, but I think I have to do another OBS for that, so I'll, I don't know, I'll figure that out. Um, Haggai says, hey, any cool techniques for adding fillets to Boolean object? Thought Z-Re Mesh is the ultimate solution. Turns out that if you have more than one added to Boolean, confuses a Z-Re Mesher. Um, there's a couple of techniques for adding fil fillets to Boolean objects. Um, Yeah, there, there's a couple. Um, I go, so if you go here, I go through, uh, it's not additive, it's the subtractive, but hold on just a second. So at the bottom of the Zebras 4 r 8 what's new? If you go to specifically modifying sharp Boolean intersection, so this will be subtractive, so that'll kind of be a couple of interesting things you can go through for that. And then for the additive, uh, Chi Vang, uh, had an interesting one, and there was another um, interesting one where you can use like bridge geometry. Uh, I guess we can go over that a little bit here. Actually, I'll, I'll link you to his video. That'd be kind of unfair for me. So, let me go here real quick. If you go to Cheese YouTube, um, let's go to his videos here. Yeah, how to make a fillet after Boolean in Zebra 4R8. So, if you check this video out, 
he can walk you through the process of a couple different ways you can kind of modify those transitions between objects here. Can these brushes transfer to other 3D programs? Sure. Uh, you would have to probably make them, I mean, you probably couldn't just save a ZBrush out and then load into another program unless they had a way to go in there and take all the, which I guess wouldn't be impossible, but you can take all the meshes out of the brush and put them into like an insert mesh brush for Maya or Moto. Um, but if you had the sub tool you used to create your multi-insert mesh brush, like if I wanted to make these into an insert mesh brush, it would be just a simple matter of dragging it out of my canvas here. Let's go ahead and hide that here as a movie. Do not show. Okay, so we got this thing here. So now if I hit brush, uh, create, insert multi mesh, that'll go ahead and create uh, one, two, three, four different brushes in here. Um, so if you have your sub tool that you use to create your multi insert mesh brush, then it would just be a matter of saving these things out and loading it into your other program, exporting it out as, you can export them out as OBJ, you can export them out as FBX or STLs. So between all those, you should have all the options to kind of transfer between programs here. Um, and you can also turn them into alphas if you want to. So now in this one, if we go to brush, uh, create, um, like Meathead suggested, we can go here to create, and then we can do create multi-alpha brush. And now this one, when I cycle through, let's see if we can grab that one here, create insert mesh, create multi-alpha. Hmm. This doesn't sound weird. Let's see. Brush. Oh, you know what? Because I have this one selected, let's go ahead and let's grab a brush that already has a multi-alpha in it. So I'll take this chis rectangle and we're just going to go ahead and clone this off. And then I'm going to go to here. Let's delete all these out of here. And you can see that number in the upper left-hand corner going down as I delete. And then I go from 0 to 32 again. But it's just actually 0. And now if we go to create multi-alpha brush, now as I cycle through these, it'll go ahead and just create alphas from those meshes. So now again, we have the multi-alpha. Uh, so that's cool. And then that way, if we go to our sphere, instead of doing an insert mesh brush, let's grab this one here, drag it out. Let's go ahead and do split mass points here. And we'll divide this a couple times. And now if we go in here to this multi-alpha brush and we drag out, it's just going to be an alpha that we can cycle through. So we can go to Z intensity here. And let's grab a little more interesting one. <laughs> let's go to the chisel rectangle. So now, now we have, um, these are being dragged out as alphas, so you can drive that Z intensity. And because they're alphas, you can also just go in here to the stroke, and we can turn on um, the lazy mouse. If we change this from a drag rec to a dot stroke, you can just cycle through these. And you can also, because they're kind of like a hybrid between alphas and insert mesh brushes, you can still have all the power to go down here to like modifiers, uh, change the selector so we can cycle through. So I can drag this one out. Let's go ahead and do our stroke, change our lady ra lazy radius down, change our lazy step down. So you can kind of drag these out, and then each time I drag, it selects a new alpha because I told it to cycle through these alphas as we go. Um, and we'll change that Z intensity up a little bit. So another cool thing is we now have a new inflate function. Let me show you that to you guys real quick if you don't watch the video. So alpha texture, we have a high magnify. So we go thick to thin. Um, let me stop cycling through the alpha so I can just pick one I like. There we go. Go back to zero. We'll grab this one. And now we can just kind of do that. So we can go thick to thin. So thin and tablet pressure to thick. Um, you can also now inflate while you're doing that. If you change this magnify up, you can kind of inflate through, which is cool, especially if you go and grab your new vector 3D stuff. So we go to chisel 3D. Now these are all vector alphas, uh, vector displacement alphas. So you're going to see instead of just an alpha sitting here, it says 3D. So now you can drag out uh, vector displacement alphas, which have undercuts. So we can grab like this mouth here and drag that out. And then you can actually see it goes here. It has a little mouth bag, the underside of the lips, all of this stuff updates on the fly. And then the mouth bag that goes way down the neck here. So a lot of really cool stuff in here that you can kind of play with. And again, it's got up un uh, undercuts, all that good stuff. So we can drag the ear out here and that just deforms your mesh that way. Uh, these are really easy to create as well. But so we've got these and uh, these things too, you can cycle through and you know set to, uh, if we go here to stroke and we make this a drag dot and we take this ear and then we go here and we turn on lazy mouse and change the lazy step is like 0.25. So now it's not drag dot dots, there you go. So now you can kind of drag out a bunch of ears and make that into a cool brush and go again, to small to large to small. Or if you go down here to magnify, 
We can go small to large to small and get a little bit of a different effect here. You're going to see it inflates along that stroke. So, kind of cool, maybe. Hey, Arion 3D, thanks for showing up. Uh, but can it help in Maya? Sure. All these brushes are just meshes. Uh, the vector ones, you might have to do a little bit of juggling, but if it's just simple insert mesh brushes, those are just meshes. Nothing fancy. They're just the ways you brush implements them as a brush is what's fancy. Uh, is there a way to print that when I extrude an edge, I create a polygon connection to the next edge? I just want to extrude the edge. We said delete the polygon connection by hand. I don't think you can in Z Modeler. The reason is because um, that has a, uh, it really doesn't like non-manifold geometry. So if I go down here to initialize, we'll just do initialize Q cube. Oh, we got to delete our subdivision level. So geometry, delete lower, and then initialize Q cube, go into solo mode, hit F. And let's go ahead and hit unify. So we go in here. And we grab these faces here, we can extrude these out. Now, if I wanted to like extrude these two edges, you can mask them. And then you can go to edge, just mask these, this edge and this edge, and then invert that mask. And then, uh, but yeah, you can't, I don't think extrude just an edge out. You know, just like the extrude this edge out, because that would give you non-manifold geometry. You would have a T-junction here with a plane that's going into this mesh, and it would just be mathematically incorrect. Um, now, what wouldn't be is if you had all of these, so let's go ahead and delete hidden. So now in this case, you would think, okay, I want to extrude this edge. It should be legal, um, but it is going to add geometry there. Um, let's go ahead and do insert, insert, single edge loop, hold down alt. Now what you could do, I suppose, is just do, now we'll go ahead and extrude this edge here, and then we can extrude this edge here, and then we can extrude this edge here. So you can just kind of, that's doing something weird. Interesting. I guess we can only extrude down but you can just go through and hold down alt and then delete hidden and then now we can extrude up and then extrude down and then delete hidden um but if you are going to be doing that like if i'm cutting a panel through a shape basically what i'll do is let's take you know what, let's just do it to a sphere make poly mesh 3d so i'm going to go to append anything doesn't really matter because i'm going to change oops i'm going to change this thing to our trusty Q cube. Got a solo mode here. If you want to see it, you can go in here and you can scale this up, not the sphere. Uh, this thing. Oh, you know what? I have transpose all selected subtools still on. Duh. Okay, okay, we turn this up. So if I want to cut a panel through here and it's just going to be like a really thin panel, I really don't care about this object so much. You know, I can go through here and be like, I don't, you know, take Q mesh and just model this thing out and I want to drag these things down. Um, I can just hold down shift or I can control alt, oops, let's go to mask, turn these alphas off, back to mask pin here. Um, we can hold on control alt and just grab this one and then we can just transpose this down. So really what I'm really concerned about is this, these angles right here. So as I'm Q meshing here, I'm just kind of getting that angle. And then when I'm done, I can just really quickly go through here and just like get rid of all that stuff. So now I can go through here and I can Q mesh this back. Or if I want to, I can grab this um, insert. Uh, let's go ahead and bevel these two. So we'll kind of bevel this one and we'll bevel this one. And then in this one, we'll go ahead and insert multiple edge loops with interactive elevation. And now we can kind of just pull back through and kind of round these corners out here if we want to. And now I can do Q mesh, all polygons, pull this back. And then we'll go ahead and flip those because we flipped the display properties for you guys. Flip will be down here under display properties. When you pull back through something, it'll flip the um, normals there. So we can go ahead and extend this out. And now we can go ahead and set this to subtractive, go out of transparency mode, alt R, turn off polyframe. And now you can see we have a panel slice that you can just kind of put anywhere. So that way, um, you know, you can just, you can, if you are extruding, you can just do a face extrude and then get rid of all your extraneous faces. You can paint them and invert that selection or whatever you want. Um, so yeah, edge with non-manifold kind of doesn't do that well, but that's okay. Uh, I've had to convert to mesh and transfer Maya was a file name. You can do export as a OBJ. You can also probably export as a Maya file. That'll probably work. And FBX, yeah, you're right. Uh, so as Andrea, Andrei, 
says if you go over here to Z plugin, you can go over here to the FBX import export and you can export them from there. So OBJs and FBXs are fine and you can also export, like I said, as a Maya file if you really want to go that route as well. Uh, Fritz brings up a good point when you are exporting. Um, I think if you use GoZ now, uh, it will convert your poly groups to selection sets. So you can also use GoZ to do that. You can just take these meshes in here and do GoZ and shoot that over to Maya if you want. I have heard that. I haven't actually used it yet, so don't quote me on that. Thanks for showing up. Control Shift A. Glad the videos are helping out. Um, does it retain polygroups from meshes when you put use of vector displacements in 3D alphas? I don't, it doesn't, and that's because what it's really doing is just displacing your mesh underneath. It has, I don't think it has any, it doesn't transfer any polygroups. So that's the other thing too. If you did want to have a polygroup for your vector displace, you know what, I guess I can just stay on this one. Um, so if this sphere here, and because this is a live Boolean, I can just take brush, um, insert, we'll go to the chisel 3D. We'll grab an ear. So as I'm sculpting through, because it's live, let's go ahead and drag, rack, turn off X. You know, we have the order of operation. So because that cuts below my start group here, I can just move this thing around and it'll go ahead and it move this thing around too and it'll just slice however I want. So uh, when we're doing our vector, dis vector displacements and we want to, let's turn off live render temporarily. Uh, we want to constrain it to a poly group. I would suggest possibly, hold that control, turn off lazy mouse. Um, just masking that out first and hit control W and that'll give you a polygroup and then uh, you can even isolate this if you want to and drag that ear out and that'll kind of can just constrain it to just that polygroup there if you want you know so but yeah it's, it's not going to give you a new polygroup because it's just deforming the mesh it's just yeah deforming the mesh and it's not uh, no semblance of polygroups or anything like that um Do, 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 do. Fritz says OBJ is an old format. Um, yeah, I would do. I would definitely do FBX. If you go through my uh, YouTube channel and you go through the live stream highlights, whenever we're doing, and if if you want to bake multiple maps at once and like say Substance Painter, doing an FBX to an FBX, you can match the names up. So that's another cool thing. And also when you export an FBX and import an FBX, when you import an FBX, it'll take keep your names and your sub tools here your separate objects and your poly paint. So I don't use OBJs anymore, but. And really an FBX, if you're just using it to transfer models, is just basically uh, an envelope that has a bunch of OBJs in it, give or take, that maintains a lot more properties than an OBJ does transferring back and forth, so. Uh, did you show you how to deform multi subtools at once? Uh, not deforming because I don't think you can. I did, you can merge them all together and use the deformations. You can you can do the whole, you know, transpose all, you can transpose multiple subtools and kind of pick through them. We talked about that, but you can't use the deformers to deform multiple unless you merge them first and then split them back up. Cool. Um, Booleans don't hold UV information because uh, it's just, re it's when you do your subtractive mesh, if we take this one here, it's just giving you a brand new mesh here. It will retain your polygroups, and you can UV it easily after that um, just by going through there. But yeah, when you do your uh, live Boolean union mesh, it'll kill your UVs. Cool. Awesome. Uh, sorry, I'm a little bit behind on the things. I'm just going to take a real quick look through. Um, da -da -da -da. Thanks for the kind words, Jake. Thanks for showing up. Is there anything new when it comes to retopology and tricks to export materials in the bakes? There's always been a way to get your matte caps. Oh man, this goes way back. Like I think ZBrush 3.1. Um, there is a way, maybe it's like matte cap export. Um, Joseph dressed a, oh, matte cap baker. So yeah, use this here if you want to export your matte caps as something that's a little bit more usable that's baked in your mesh. I don't do that often. Uh, as far as retopology, um, zero mesher, topology brush, these for topology, I don't think there's anything too new. Cool. 
cool. Thanks for showing up, everybody. Just going through the the talk, uh, the chat right here, real quick. Um, how do you feel about the creativity of Mark Brunette cube brush? Uh, pretty good, but I'd have to go check him out. I'm not sure off the top of my head. Uh, deformer for mask. Uh, what if he had a deformer for mask manipulation? Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, um, that's a tough one. I have to think about that because uh, one thing you can do, it's kind of interesting. So let's take this one here. So if you have a mesh, uh, let's go to brush insert. Let's just grab something simpler. Let's do an industrial parts here and we'll grab uh, this nut. So we'll just drag this onto here. Let's go ahead and delete. Whoops. So we grab this here. Uh, one thing you can do, it's kind of interesting if we go ahead and split unmasked points. So we have our sphere and we have this nut. Let's just go ahead and hold down shift and turn these two on. If you want to, for masking purposes like masking through an object, you can go into, let me see if I remember how to do this. We have this one showing and we have this one here. So if we go to transparency mode on and we go to... Uh, my standard brush here. We're going to go to turn on RGB. We'll go ahead and color fill our object with white. And then if we change that to black, oh, we don't have to because if we go have our object in white, we go B, Z, P, Z project brush, and then just do RGB. You can actually paint through an object and it's camera based. So you can kind of just, I'm, see how I'm just going all over the place. You can actually paint through the silhouette of an object. And then now you can convert that to a mask. Um, so you're not modifying it on the fly for sure, but I guess you could maybe do a live Boolean and move that around and then slice the poly group so you can do an uh, intersection. Hmm. I'll have to think about that one. But if any that, that so that's useful to anybody, um, you know. Like I said, it, it could be any, 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 it's also camera based. If you go down here to this direction, you start painting, it'll just be camera based painting here. So you can kind of see how it's just kind of going back through. So if you want to go straight on, you just go through and paint real quick, and then you can just convert that RGB to a mask. Uh, bake, uh, Petrini says, I'd like to see a baking video with high res, low res, matte cap, and bake. I do a ton of that. If you go to my gum road, you can go to the, um, Reptile Creature series, and that part two goes through all that. Also, my cube brush here. Uh, a lot of different baking. If you go to my live stream uh, full episodes or live stream highlights in this playlist here, that'll go through um, baking. Uh, it's it's a little bit faster. It's a little more iterative. It's just a quick stuff I do for the robots. But go to the salt bot and stuff, and that'll go from ZBrush to Painter to Sketchfab and all that good stuff. Um. Life Lover asks, what are your thoughts on ZBrush poly painting options? Would you rather spend entire time in ZBrush or would you use a complimentary software? I use all the software. So on Pixelogic's channel, I just use ZBrush just because I'm on Pixelogic's channel. But here we do, I do Painter. Um, we haven't gotten into like 3D Code or Mari or uh, Mudbox or anything like that. But feel free to use whatever you want to texture. I personally like texturing in Painter just because I like having the heavy lifting done by the procedural tools. <laughs> than me sitting there like hand painting, you know, different things. Uh, hard surface UV mapping, yeah. Uh, grab edges by normal threshold and split those off and then flatten them out. That's how I ended up doing the... Oh, man, I did so much UVing. If you go to my art station... That's another thing I should bring up is on my art station page, if you don't like sorting through my YouTube channel, if you just go here, this is a little bit prettier. It's a little bit more laid out. So if you go to, like, the commander... Um, I kind of have a walkthrough. It's just a painter walkthrough and then some screenshots and stuff like that. So I don't actually go through the hard edge UVing, but what I would do is when you have your game res all made, you can usually select your edges by, again, in Maya, I did this. It was a normal angle, and then I split off uh, those, and then I had, you know, edge padding, and then when you bake them off, it should be, give you a pretty, pretty okay solution there. Yeah, dealing with modifying the mask on higher resolution. Yeah, that's a tough one, man. I'm not really sure. Someone smarter than me probably has a more elegant solution. Cool. Um, okay, so everybody's good. 
uh, can I ask uh, Alex? Ask can I ask a new question? Uh, this is learning how I can mask without fade because no matter how many polygons I have, I always fade. Um, yeah. So when you go into your mask, when you hold that control, you're gonna see there's a focal shift of zero, and that'll kind of just kind of blur out your edges. If your focal shift is high, um, that'll kind of see how it's so blurry right here. Um, you can hold on Control Alt and tap, and that does a mask sharpen. So if you go down here, there masking options here. Um, you can do sharpen mask, blur mask, all this stuff. But um, as, for, as far as the fading around the edges, if you hold on control, and again, you have to hold down control to go to the mask pen. If you don't, now, uh, you know, if I had the standard brush selected, I'm changing the properties for my standard brush. So hold down control, change your focal shift to negative 100. And you see, as I do that, my, my, my brush size, you can tap S and then make your brush size bigger or smaller. As I do that, you're gonna see that inside line is kind of coming out to meet the outside line. That distance between those two is what's that what's creating that focal shift of that fall off. So if there is no fall off because they're both the same line, now when you go through and mask, it'll oops, hold on control, it'll give you a very sharp line. So let's go ahead and unmask. We'll divide that up one more time. And now we get a very, very sharp mask. Um, also, when you're masking, and let's say you want to do a drag rect with an alpha like a star, and your focal shift's at zero. When you drag this out, see how it kind of fades at the edges? Again, you can tighten that up if you want to, but it doesn't really do what you need. Um, make sure you change that focal shift to negative 100, and there you go. Nice and crispy. And then you can go through here, and you can like transpose uh, through this thing, or you could like, go to deformation and inflate or deflate. All sorts of cool stuff. <laughs> it's Seagull. It's so easy to take me out of orbit. There's a lot of things. I don't know, or I would have to really think hard and still fail at. And that's why I like going to like ZBrush Central and stuff and going through their YouTube channel just because they usually have a little bit more elegant solutions. Um, I am in ZBrush a lot, depending on what I'm working on at work, I'll be in ZBrush a lot, but other times I'm not in ZBrush that much. So kind of depends. <clears throat> cool. No problem. Uh, so let's see. Let's clear. Okay, I need to go back here. Now I can go through here and delete like all these subtools and stuff, but I'm going to since we made a slight modification to this thing, I'm gonna go ahead and save as here streaming uh, Pazzy Brush Female here. Let me go ahead and resave over this one. So now when I do a tool save as, it's gonna save this tool. If I do a file save as, it's gonna save all this garbage along with it. So this way, I can go ahead and do a preferences initialize. Let's go ahead and just close the brush down. We'll give it a little breather. <coughs> Excuse me. And we'll launch that back up. Uh, Petrini Art, is there a way to recreate ZBrush matcaps? I know I asked for a matcap baker before, but would I uh, create the AOE and texture from ZBrush and have the shader in Unreal? Yes, there is. I know Blender has a way to just take the matcaps, and really all a matcap is. I need to kill that startup stuff. Um, let me see. Macro. Beep. Boop. Beep. Okay. So. Um, Matt caps. Uh, uh, um, so a matcap is actually pretty simple here. If we go and grab, let's just grab a tool here. Demo head. So in here, uh, if we grab any of these matcaps, caps, so what's controlling this matcap cap here is under the material here, is basically, if we go to modifiers, this little light gray thing down here is what's controlling the mat cap. If you want to make your own mat cap, it's pretty easy. If you go into the light menu, you just throw this over here and you can go into the uh, light cap and this is basically capturing light. So the first thing you need to do is let's go over here to light and we'll turn down the intensity of the light, the ambient of the light. If you go to any of your basic materials, you now just have, you know, this. Now, because it's still showing up a little bit, that's because if you go into the material here, you have a little bit of ambient on in the material by default. If you tank that all the way down, now it's just black. So all your, any, any of your basic materials you select, if you have no ambient, it's just a black material. However, if you go to matcap gray, looks fine because it doesn't need lighting. The lighting's baked in. So if you're able to transfer this information right here into another program, and I know Blender does it, I think, if you Google it, I'm sure this this will be there will be some solutions here. But if you want to just recreate your own matte cap, um, you can do it in Photoshop, or you can do it in um, yeah, you can do it in Photoshop if you want. So you can take this little thing here, and you can load in another texture. So if I use this texture, now my material capture is using this as my matte cap. Or you so you can import a, a, um, a matte cap. So here's the eyeball that we're using, and we're using it as a matte cap here. So you can import this as a texture and then just select it. 
uh, through this thing here. Uh, but again, like I said, if you want to make your own light cap, it's pretty easy. Just uh, make, you know, make sure all your lights and stuff are off. And then all of the, uh, let's see, Mac material. Let's go back to our base material here. So everything's off. Uh, so if we go in here, we can do a new light. And now we have a light that we can move around. And then you can go in here, you can change the aperture, you can change the shadow. Um, there, are, there also is specular and diffuse. So if you go over here to specular, this is specular control, and you can just turn that down to zero if you just want diffuse, or we can add the specular. Um, so we can go over here, we go back to diffuse, so we can move this light around. So we have a primary light here, and then we can do a new light. And then this light, now it's red, so now we have two indices. So that would go and goes to this one. You can also just click on here and grab it, that'll grab your new index. And now on this one here, we can change the color. So we can make that red. And we can either change the exposure or the strength here. So we can keep that one solved. Let's go back to index one and we'll crank that up. So that'll be our key light and our fill light. And again, it's just a matte cap. And you're going to see what it's creating is, um, it's not, it's, this is all live. So it's not creating anything yet, but it's creating a sphere with shading on it that we can convert to a matte cap later. So feel free to go through all here. There's a lot of different, um, you can change the fall off. We can tighten that up a little bit. And then we can go to the other indices. We can tighten that up a little bit, or we can make it really stylized here. And then we can change the aperture to kind of shrink that down. So you can kind of get some interesting looks going like this. Uh, like I said before, if I go here to my quick saves, you're going to see I was going through Pablo Munoz um, ZBrush. Let me link that to you guys. If you go to ZBrush Guides, <laughs> there we go. Do, 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 do. If you scroll down, there is a free, awesome. <laughs> oh, here we go. Uh, tutorials, ebooks. I'll link you here. So if you guys go to this ebooks page, there is a free uh, a guide to ZBrush comic style render. So you can go through that and that'll teach you all about uh, matte caps and light caps. And it's got resources available for you. What I'm going to ask him if I can do is uh, just come onto my live stream and just go through his tutorial and just do the live stream of it. So that'll be kind of a companion piece um, to his book. There's some, there's some things in the book that uh, it might be easier to see in video. So I don't know. I'll ask him if that's cool and we can just go through that. Um, let me see. Oh, but yeah, speaking of this, uh, if you wanted to convert this to a Mac app, it would just be a matter of uh, go to create texture and then you just grab this texture here and you just grab that image and now you have a Mac cap. So, um, if we grab, go ahead and turn texture off. So we have our basic material here that we've created. We have no lights on. Um, we can go ahead and and you can also, if you want to keep these here, you can go save and you can save your light cap and bring it back in and modify it on the fly. Um, but yeah, so now, now you can take any of these. So if we go over here to our matte cap gray that we messed up here. So here's our matte cap gray where we loaded in the weirdo eyeball texture. Now you can load this one in and now we have a custom matte cap that we created. So pretty cool. So let's go ahead and initialize ZBrush. Now, as far as making that work in another program, they would have to have a similar kind of setup. But like I said, I think Blender does and possibly some other ones have the same kind of, uh, you can you can use that same tech. Is there a way to add destroyed effect to a skin easily like Alexia Ruboy did in her submission in the ArtStation Challenge? She did the mask delete or use software like that. Destroyed effect to a skin. Yeah, uh, that should be fairly straightforward. If we grab, I mean, there's a lot of different ways to do messed up skin in ZBrush here. Um, I don't know exactly what you're talking about, but if you go here to, we have geometry, add the subdivided up. Uh, a lot of different, I mean, I would probably, you could do spray stroke with an alpha and you can kind of just go through here and do destroy stuff. You can also do with live Boolean. If we go ahead and do a subtool uh, append, this is kind of a cool thing. So we'll grab a sphere and we'll move this over. And on the sphere, we can go ahead and do our surface noise. And with this one, we can go ahead and look in here. Let's go ahead and create some surface noise for this object. We'll go ahead and change the strength a little bit and the scale for sure. 
There we go. So once we have this kind of going, you can go through here and you can modify this thing. Or of course, you can know use noise plugins, use your own alphas, all that good stuff. So now we go okay. We'll go ahead and make this one uh, subtractive here. And now if we go into our live render, oh, subtractive, not intersective. Now we have, uh, looks like concrete's messing up his face. And it doesn't even matter. I mean, it's quick. It doesn't matter if this is 10 million polygons or 1 million polygons or whatever. Um, the live boolean will go pretty quickly through all these things. Sub, uh, you know, if you have uh, subdivision history or not, doesn't really matter. Um, there was a beta tester who also did, I forget the name, I apologize in advance, but you can also just like take a piece off of here. So we go, um, let's go ahead and just duplicate this off, delete lower, control W, isolate this, delete hidden. Let's go ahead and polish those polygroup borders. And then we'll do a quick Z remesh half. So you can take this like little individual specific pieces out of here. And let's keep knocking this down. Half, half half. There we go. Uh, so now if you take this one, Q mesh, polygroup all, we'll pull this back, and we'll go ahead and flip that. So now I can make this a subtractive mesh here. So you can kind of start cutting through, like if you want to do zombie stuff, you can start cutting through layers of your object here, and you can just use your move brush as well, just kind of move this stuff in and out. Uh, if you need a little bit more leeway, you can go back through here and do Q mesh, polygroup all, hold down shift, and let's go out of the render here so I can make sure I'm grabbing the right side here. Yeah, there we go. So we can just pull along that surface normal here, and now we go back into the normal. We can really dig deep with that new thing we made. And of course, any of this stuff you have here, you can hit D for dynamic preview, and that'll kind of smooth it out, as well as, you know, you can crease by polygroups if you want to keep a sharp edge around there or not. And you can also, again, go in here to the uh, surface noise, and then we can do our strength, scale, like so. And now you can kind of just move this around and kind of go through and dig in. So. Lots of really cool stuff. And you can sculpt in this thing. So you can use your clay brush and just go in here and start sculpting. It's all live. And all I'm doing is just sculpting on that mesh. So if we go to the back side here, you can just start sculpting. And we have noise applied, so we're sculpting through that noise. You don't like the noise, just turn the noise off. And now while we're sculpting, you know, it's modifying on the fly. So now the noise here it looks cool, but it's not going to be applied if we do a, a union mesh. So what we need to do is let's go ahead and divide this up. So when we go apply to mesh, when it applies the mesh, will be enough resolution. And now we can create uh, a union mesh for that. So uh, uh, yeah, uh, I don't know if that link's going to work. Looks like it's missing some stuff here. There we go. Oh, that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, you would create a shell and you could use the live booleans. Uh, yeah, that should be pretty easy. And yeah, what I would do is like create a dynamic shell and then uh, live boolean any fractured pieces that you wanted to. And then you could just use like the fracture um, or there's um, if I go into my comma key here, let's see if I have these still. Uh, I should have them under rocks. Speaking of Pablo Munoz, if you go to the ZBrush, the ZBrush link I sent out earlier, um, he's got some good brushes in there for just those type of cracks here. I might have to load those up. I haven't gone through and copied everything over yet at home. So, but I mean, in, in a pinch, you can just, oh, come on. want to unmask here. There we go. Just divide this up and then you can just take the standard brush and we'll just go here and you can crank your the intensity up and you know crack you can make your own custom drag crack. So if you go and watch the Pixelogic Cubimal Chick, uh, we go through here where we basically let's just do it here. Go through here and we'll grab a plain 3D. Uh, make poly mesh 3D. Go out of smooth, divide, 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 divide. And now you can make like just a custom like kind of crack thing. Let me make sure this lazy radius is up. Yeah. So you can make your own custom cracks in here. And of course you can drag out other custom cracks that you've possibly made before like so. And then if you want to just capture this 
Uh, you can probably, probably the easiest way, you can do a document grab, but we'll just go ahead and just do a real quick um, MRGBZ grabber here. Let me just grab this information, this hide information here. Make that into an alpha. And then if we go back here, we can go to the standard brush. Let's go ahead and take our standard brush. We'll clone it off, and then we'll do drag rect this new alpha here. And we might need to find a midplane for it, but let's go ahead and crank that intensity up. Focus shift down to negative 100. Yeah, so we got a easy enough. We can go to the alpha menu here. And we could have just done from mesh as well, as opposed to just grabbing the alpha here, but I don't know, another option you can use. And then we can go to the alpha. I don't need light anymore. We need alpha, modify. I'm pretty sure if I go to, because I just went down, so I'm going to take this, ba, 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 where did it go? Come on, mid value, there it is, to 100. There we go. So now I won't deform my mesh like this, and now you can just do like custom cracks all over the place. Of course, do a better job than I do. Um, speaking of rendering, we did go through and do the cubable chicken key shot here. So yeah, that look should be easy enough. Uh, you can do mask and delete. You can go through here if you want to like, like here. Let's go ahead and just dynamesh this guy. So turn off project, turn off blur. There's a lot of different ways you can accomplish that look. So I don't want to be like, you do it exactly this way, especially if I'm just kind of just riffing on the fly. Uh, but if I had to guess, I mean, you could even like Z-Remesh. Here's another way. You can, uh, yeah, okay, let's do it this way. Let's undo that. Let's do a, let's duplicate this off. And we've got this one here. And if we just have one-sided mesh here, right? So we'll go ahead and do um, geometry, go down to the lowest, delete higher. And now I'm going to give this a little bit of thickness here. So I'm going to Q-Mesh, Polygroup All. Actually, let's not do a Q-Mesh. Let's do Extrude so it doesn't snap to any weird faces. And we'll do, I said Polygroup All. There we go. And just to be safe, I'm going to go ahead and turn off Double and flip that. So now we've got some thickness here. So if I want to get my details back to my face here, what I can do is just have these two on. Hold on, Control shift Isolate this. Let me turn off the Live Boolean there. So I can have, I have these two poly groups here, so I'm going to go ahead and isolate this top one with control shift. What's going on here? Oh, drag rect. Okay, you know what we're going to do? We're going to go to brush, reset all brushes. There we go. So okay. I can isolate this top one here. And then again, with these ones showing, I can just go to subtool project all. And then we can go ahead, let's crease by polygroup, and we'll subdivide this, isolate this one, project all. Control D, isolate this one, project all. Control D, isolate this one, project all. So we're basically doing is getting uh, thickness to our mesh, which you could do with DynaMesh and Shell, uh, but I for a little bit more control and a little bit... Um, just, uh, you know, a little bit less destructive. What we can do now is we can go ahead and go to insert anything. We'll go to insert this thing, and then we'll go ahead and we'll make this a new start group here. And now let's set this to subtractive, turn on our live Boolean. And now wherever you put these little cracks and stuff and however you want to model that out, now you have, let's go ahead and move this thing around here. Turn on polyframe so you can see the hatch marks here. So however you want to make your cracks, you can now just go through. And now you have a shell and all these little cracks and interior spaces. And then you can actually grab this interior one here. So if you take this one and we do, for example, let's go ahead and duplicate this off. Now for this one, what I want to do is I'm going to isolate, go into solo mode here. And we're going to take this outer shell. Let's go ahead and turn my Boolean off. So We've got an outer shell and we've got an interior shell. So I'm going to take this interior shell here. Let's go down to lowest. We're going to delete higher. I'm going to delete hidden. And then on this one here, we can go into um, bu -bu 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 -bu, insert nano mesh, polygroup all. And that one's just going to do a cube by default, which is fine in this case because for this cube, what I can do now is go to my nano mesh properties. And you know, we can go. And again, I'm just riffing off the top of my head of how to do this stuff, but random distribution, um, not rotation. Let's go ahead and keep. OK, 
kind of rotate these things out and then we can do the offset we'll do the offset here we kind of push these things back so you can kind of get a layer of little crystal shards in there you can kind of mess around with the offsets to kind of get that to work correctly let's go ahead and do uh, you know so you do length and height variance on your stuff let's go to fit maybe size so any sort of crystal stuff you want to do, you can use nano mesh and then we can just go like, okay, inventory one to mesh. And now we can get rid of this interior space we were doing. And then you can assign that a different material. So now when we go into our live render here, we've got little crystals on the inside and a shell and you know, obviously you can move that stuff around. Cracks, all that good stuff, so. Cool. Thank you, Jurg Meyer for the kind roads. Kind, kind roads, kind words. Um, how are we doing on time? I think about 30 minutes. Uh, is Keyshot really good doing great owners models? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we I go into Keyshot all the time. If, again, if you go to my YouTube channel, we do a ton of Keyshot rendering. And with the ZBrush Bridge, it's super easy. So let me load up something that we might take into... Let me see, I have any streaming. Let me go to... Give me a second. Desktop. Let's grab... Intro, sample files, anything in here? I guess that'll work. So if everybody's tired of this one, yeah, we can send this over to Keyshop. Actually, this one, uh, for demo purposes, I'm going to go ahead and skip that one. Let's go ahead and load in something. I just want something. Oh, you know what? Let's just do this one. We've done it before. So let's grab this one. Yes, best thing ever. So I have live Boolean turned on. So we're just doing this mesh here. Let's go ahead and do our, um, what am I looking for here? Uh, sub tool, Boolean, d, d sub div is on, make union mesh or make Boolean mesh. And then here's our U mesh here with all the different sub tools here. So now I can just go to render, external renderer, key shot, and we'll just send that on over. Cool, cool. Um, thanks for everybody for showing up. We're just kind of going through here. Uh, modeling the toes out on a foot. Oh, I have more of that too. So when we did the so if again, if you go to my, I'm, I'm like, I'm just, I'll stop spamming for just a second, but go to my playlist channel and go to the live stream highlights and go all the way down for both the Pixel Logic and my personal uh, YouTube channel. And you'll see I do a female anatomy walkthrough. I do a male anatomy walkthrough. We model the feet. We Z remesh. We get mouth bags. We project. So all that stuff should be in here or should be available to you. So if we want to render this thing, super duper easy and super fun. So we'll go in here to like our plastics here and we'll do hard plastics. And like we did on the other channel, we can just do orange. And now that we got those dragged out, we can just keep reusing. So I can keep reusing this orange for like the feet and the legs and then the yellow here. And then we need a metal here. So I'm gonna go grab metal. And like I said, before I go through all this uh, key shot stuff, a lot so we'll just grab a stainless steel on here if I don't like that look I can double click it and we can go in here to eh, you know what I want to do let's just do steel basic polished there we go and change that roughness up a bit we'll make that a little bit darker there, there we go key shot um, also if we wanted to light those eyeballs up what might be kind of fun let's go to edit add geometry We'll do a cylinder. Now let's do a sphere. So I'm going to add a sphere here. I'm going to right click that sphere. We're going to go to move part. And now we can scale this part down. I don't know if this is a pro only feature. I have the Zebra or the Keyshot Pro. Uh, but you can go to the ZBrush's website and you can download the ZBrush to Keyshot Bridge. You can do and it, you have to, the, the caveat, the catch is you have to go through ZBrush to render your stuff, but that's actually okay with me. So it's a lot cheaper to do it that way. So now what I can do is I can go to my uh, materials here. Let's type in emissive. We'll do an emissive cool, and that'll kind of give it a little emissive light in here. You can go through here and change that intensity down. So another cool thing you can do is that'll kind of light up his eyeball there. Um, 
Another cool thing you can do is let's go to scenes here and we can go ahead and right click duplicate that one. And then we can now take this one and we can go to move and we'll go ahead and move this over to the other eyeball. Cool. And now we can also do custom lighting. So we can go to um, file, edit, add geometry plane. And now we can take this plane here and we can move this one. Rotate this plane around here. Move it up. Scale it up. And now instead of a missive here, we can just go to like an area light and put this on here. And then we double click these properties. We can go through here. Let's change this to watts. And now we can kind of put in a custom plane. Now, of course, you don't need to do that. You can go to your turn off your plane here. And instead of the Z startup environment, you can go over here to environments. And uh, ZBrush, if you have the ZBrush Keyshot Bridge, they have their own uh, custom environment lighting here. So you can kind of make him look like he's on a Pixelogic roof or in Barcelona in a little patio here. Kind of cool stuff. If you don't want to see that, go over here to environments, turn on color, and just do a dark gray like that. Now, if you did want to mix environment lighting with custom lighting, you just go back to your scene here, turn on your polyplane, and now you've got your custom lighting built in. If you don't want to see this, just double click it and say not visible to camera. And now it'll still light up your thing, uh, but not totally. And then you can go back here to your environment lighting and turn that down. And now you can kind of dial in all this stuff. Now, if you wanted to do something like glass or, um, let's see, glass or beer, we can, uh, oh, it's another thing too. If you don't want, if you want to keep this around, let's go to scene and we'll do, instead of the set scene sets default, I'm going to right click this and do add a scene set and call this beer. Beer chicken. So now that we're on beer chicken here, we're on the scene set. Now we can go ahead and switch back and forth. So we'll go over here to materials, beer, and we can just drag that onto the top node and that'll just replace all of this with beer. So now he's got beer with emissive eyes. Ta-da! Uh, but of course, if you want it to render correctly, you're gonna to wanna to go to lighting. We're on basic. So as you step through here, it's changing some of these properties here. If you go to full simulation, that's when it turns on caustics and that's when light starts coming in and bouncing around and the liquid starts behaving. Um, more appropriately. So we go over here to scene and we grab our plane properties here. We can crank up the wattage and kind of start shining that through like so. And we can also go in here to edit, do, 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 add geometry. We'll do a ground plane. And by default, ground plane is just set up to capture, um, set up to capture shadows and stuff. But if we double click it, we can change that to like a plastic and now we can kind of we can kind of see how the lights interacting with the beer going through here we have our missive eyeballs embedded in there and that's how it's kind of creating these caustics and stuff that's bouncing these little rays around and color is being applied to different things here so pretty cool pretty easy um why is the stream at 720p because i think that's what i'm capped to depending on what you're watching it on so my obs uh, I actually, I think my OBS is actually set to be at that resolution because that's what it told me to do when I was streaming for PixLogic and I went through the settings. It wasn't like, and plus this type of stuff, I don't know if you need to see it at 4K, but. Uh, how long can a human sit in front of a computer as a modeler? Um, kind of depends on the human, I think. Me, a long time, but you know, quality of life and you need to get up and Make sure you go walk around because your body will deteriorate really quickly if you're just on your butt all day. Cool, cool. Uh, again, I'm just getting caught up on the comments here. And yeah, when I am sitting, I'll have like my hip flexors will kind of cramp up. I kind of have to lean back a little bit, kind of space those out, but get a stand-up desk. I'm actually at a stand-up desk right now. So I'm standing up as I do this. So I might be see I kind of lean here and I kind of go out of camera view. That's what's going on there. Well, I'm way behind. Sorry about that, guys. And again, if I miss a comment, just keep shouting it out and I'll try and catch up here. Um, Pat, Mike, have you heard of Greebles? If you can't explain if uh, vector displacement can be used for this. Absolutely. Greebles is basically, from what I remember, is like, you remember uh, Star Wars looking at the making of videos 
and they basically go into these model kits and they would just take little pieces of the model kits and like just paste it onto the star destroyers and stuff um those are all those little things are just greebles they're just mechanical looking filler uh just to make it you know you got to sell the scale so they had to be at the right size and you can kind of just put a bunch of greebles on there so like nano mesh and greebling out um you can use vector displacement for greebles too it's just a matter of just dragging out um stuff so if we pause this here i'm going to save that beer chick out um for example, if we take, let's clone this one off here, and we'll go grab that clone, and we'll go in here and we'll dynamesh this thing. There we go. Turn off perspective here. So for the vector displacement, if we go into brush, chisel 3D, chisel rectangle, like, you know, these things can be, can be greeable. So if, again, if I go over here to the brush modifiers, uh, we don't need material anymore. Don't need alpha anymore. We do need brush modifiers. Uh, multi mesh selector. We can kind of just cycle through. So if you wanted to just use this thing to kind of just cycle through and add mechanical detail, you can. If these were vector displacements, you can mix vector and alphas. These are just regular alphas, obviously, but um, you can mix those as needed. Just go to my YouTube channel and that'll take you through here. So, yeah. Of course, if you wanted to do that um, with meshes, what I would probably do just to have a little bit more control. I wouldn't use vector displacement for greebles unless it was something like, if we go to brush, chisel, 3D, like I would maybe do something like this to kind of deform my mesh. But then after this, what I would do is go in here with my clay brush. We can kind of put in a little recessed area or go into my trim dynamic or clip or whatever. Or actually, I probably wouldn't even put this in there because what you can do now is instead of you can do a live boolean for all this stuff too as well, but um, brush insert industrial parts M. You can just grab out insert mesh brushes. And the reason I like to do that is because it's, I can uh, later on, I can go ahead and split this off. I can hit D. So I have different subtools to select. So if I want to assign a material to this later on that's different, I can just grab it. Hold down Alt, my boolean's off. There we go. You just alt tap that one. Uh, just a little bit less destructive than if I, w you can make this as a vector displacement, but then if you wanted to like, if this is all a vector displacement, it would just be part of your mesh here. It would basically be this, which it would look fine. It's like, okay, yeah, that looks great. But then if you want to assign a different material to that, it's all one mesh. You can have a poly group here. So you can be like, okay, I want to like mask this out, but then it's got that stuff. And, and if it's like, you know what? I want to change that screw out. Well, now you got to go in here and flatten that out or smooth it out and replace it with something else so up to you but uh yeah you can use it for greebles as well thanks for showing up everybody everybody good and again i'm just doing a real quick look through if i miss something i apologize i have to go in about 20 minutes i think so nuts holes etc which you load as normal for coloring additional detail yeah exactly so any of that detail stuff you want to bring on i would do that as an insert mesh brush or a live boolean and then you can slice out the major shapes and then the insert mesh brushes can be separate and then you can just greeble it up how you want way to get the 4r7 custom ui and 4r8 i think so but whenever zbrush does a full release like 4r7 to 4r8 i just recreate it all just to make sure it's compatible there's no weird code or anything weird zbrush is expecting um, so what I did was just do screenshots of my custom menu here and then just recreate it in ZBrush 4R8. And I actually made some modifications. Um, in fact, speaking of, if you go to my Gumroad page here, if you want my custom stuff for any reason, it's not great, but if you want to use it, go to the intro to ZBrush files. I've updated that with the 4R8 stuff. Cool. Oh, sorry, Seagull. I don't know. <laughs> Nightbot's going nuts. I need to go back into the settings. I need to have my wife go into the settings is what I need to do. She's good at that stuff. Uh, what we could do, basically carry details and posing and touch all the parts together in Z-Remesh or else how. Uh, Narek's asking, which we could do, when you're making a character, uh, do you do the detail then posing and attach all the parts or Z-Remesh? Uh, what I would do is do the detailed character first and then pose it. There's no point in like posing a character and then trying to like put all the stuff on it. Um, you can also go Google, oh, you don't have to Google it, I mean, Z plug and transpose master. I go through it on my channel, on my YouTube channel. Um, I think, I mean, I definitely go through it in my intro to ZBrush series. You can do transpose master. 
And that way you have a you can have a bunch of different subtools. You go to the lowest on all of them. It's transpose master. You pose it out, and then it spits them back out to your subtools, so you can do all that stuff. Uh, <laughs> what time do I go to bed? Uh, depending on what time I have to wake up for these live streams, I got to get up pretty early my time. So I don't know, eleven o'clock. Uh, something about jewelry. Um, Thomas Witt. Whittlebach, I forget his name. Um, he does a ton of jewelry stuff. I don't do a lot of jewelry, but really ju all jewelry is is just hard edge modeling as far as I can tell. So as we move forward with the, you know, doing this stuff, or hell, even this thing, this thing could be jewelry and if you wanted it to be. It's pretty simple. So um, there's some other techniques you could do as far as just like, uh, if you go through the live stream highlights here, and you scroll all the way down to the hard surface excerpt, that'll walk you through a bunch of different hard surface techniques you can use for jewelry and stuff. <laughs> so again, I apologize, Seagull. I, I, uh, I need to figure that out. Uh, any links on displacement maps done by you? I don't think I've exported anything worthwhile as far as displacement maps goes. Uh, off the top of my head. Um, but there's a good one out there. And uh, Gumroad has a bunch of people with uh, custom insert meshes and custom alphas and stuff. The custom alphas I don't find too useful because they're kind of destructive. Like I said, um, you know, when you're dragging an alpha out, you know, I do have these ones, these hard surface. So if I go here to um, brush, let's go to our alpha menu here. Or any of these really, but like these hard surface ones I got off Gumroad, and we'll go to maybe handles, and we grab this one, let's say, and then we take this one off, standard brush, drag rect, alphas, and we kind of drag this out, let's crank the, the intensity up to 100. So these are fine if you want to just kind of greeble out a mesh, but I said, like I said before, if you wanted to actually go in and make changes to this, it's super destructive. So in this case, what I would probably do is do a live Boolean for this big, the big cuts here, and then do an insert mesh brush for the handle. And that way I have a little bit more flexibility when it comes to making this stuff. If you're just doing this just real quick, just to kind of get your ideas out, you know, it's pretty cool just to go in here and kind of do that really quickly. But again, it's super destructive, so, and not very flexible. Uh, pose and character. If I pose a character after unwrapping it, it would result in stretching. What would be the best way to approach it? Um, yeah, that's exactly what happens when you do a game res mesh and then you put a rig in it and then you throw it into game and it runs around as it's deforming the mesh and posing. So you are going to deal with some stretching. So it's just a matter of putting in a lot of enough edge loops where you want it to go when you pose it out. Um, yeah, if you're just posing for a game engine, it's the same idea. So you would have to put in l edge loops and you could, I mean, there's a lot of different things you can do to avoid that. You could do blend shapes, corrective blend shapes, uh, joint helper joints, um, muscle simulations under the mesh that kind of control the mesh as you kind of deform the body. It can avoid, it can, and a texture resolution plays a little big role in that. Topology plays a huge role in that. Um, kind of goes beyond the scope of what I can do in a demo. That would have to be a, a full fledged, um, uh, DVD, but there's a ton of them out there that go through like topology and animation and rigging. It's all kind of bundled together as one massive thing, but for uh, getting your stuff to deform correctly. Uh, I want to carry my ZBrush UI from Boris. So it's all about the Y key function, the menus. Yeah, so the Y key, if you hit W, you're in gizmo mode, right? You can hold down Alt and we'll go ahead and reset these things. Um, if I hit Y now, it's going to switch over to transpose. So now I can use the transpose stuff. Um, and you might be like, well, why would you ever use transpose? There are some things that the gizmo does that the transpose can't do as vice versa. The transpose does a few things that the gizmo can't do. So if you hit Y, Y now toggles off and on this gizmo 3D to transpose. Um, when I do the live booleans, the colors, uh, have a slight blur. Yeah. So, uh, I'm trying to remember. I think on one of my YouTube channels, I go through this a little bit, but let's take this one here. And so we do turn the live Boolean render on and off here. Oh, that's my union mesh. Duh. Okay. So here's this one. So let's just do two. I'm going to grab this one here as our start group. And then I'll do the legs as another one. 
and then this is a new start group and I'll go ahead and turn that off. So oh, there's another start group here. And uh, you know what, I'm going to do auto collapse so I can kind of just go through here and we'll turn off everything and I'm just going to turn this one back on and then this one. Okay, so we're just going to deal with these two, right? And the, the reason why it does this, if I do something really obvious, like I go to uh, mrgbz color fill object for the cube and then for the legs, I'll do something again, just something really obvious, reflective red with red color. Uh, you know what, that's a little bit, let's do chrome blue with a red color. And then we'll go color fill object. And now when I do a union mesh here, uh, oh, live Boolean, there we go. Uh, dynamic so div make boolean mesh grab where's my u mesh here is it this one filled it I've got this one I've got these two I've got this start group I did a union mesh I've got colorize on <laughs> um Oh, you know what? That's probably just my clone. Okay, so make union mesh. There it is. Okay, sorry about that. So now you're getting that. And because if you go in here to the poly frame, all a poly paint is is just vertex color. So you're going to see if this vertex right here is filled with red, it's going to go to the next vertex, which is all the way over here, which is white. You know, so it's going to blend between those. Um, in a pinch, if you want to, you can just isolate this poly group here, and then we'll go back to our matte cap, or whatever we had before, matte cap gray, and then just color uh, fill object with white, and now that'll kind of clean that up. But then you're going to have the opposite problem the other direction, so this one here. Uh, the solution to that is just to add more polygons before you union mesh. So there's more polygons around here. Um, but yeah, that's the reason why it's doing it, and the solution is, and, and the reason why it's doing it is just a limitation of poly painting. It's not a texture, because there's no UVs on here, it's a union mesh. It's just taking these vert colors, and if you have a red vert color here and a white vert color here, it's going to put this one vert color as red, and it's going to bleed to the next vertex, which may be way out here, depending on your topology. So the more topology you have around here, the, bet, the closer it's going to be for your vertices. So you can either add more geometry, or if you just want to kind of caught the bleeding and put the bleeding in more or less noticeable places, you can just do a color fill there. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> Good luck on your bike ride, man. Stay safe. Cool. All right. So again, let's, uh, the mech helmet we talked about, we went over here into key shot over here and we got our paused beer chick here. Uh, we got about 10 minutes left. Probably not going to get a whole lot of sculpting done. Um, I do want to get that done, though, because I do want to go through and do some matte cap rendering. So we'll see how much time I have this weekend to kind of get that wrapped up. Um, question. Delusion L1 says, is there a way to save custom transpose units to preferences permanently? I think so. Let's take a look. So if we go over here to our transpose lines. So for those of you who don't know what this is talking about, new, uh, there we go. So I have this one here. We go to our gizmo and we hit Y, and then we can go to our transpose line. You're going to see these little transpose units. Where those are is underneath preferences, um, transpose units. You can change the unit scale and stuff. Um, I, I want to say... There's two ways you can do it now. I mean, you can go over here to um, preferences, uh, custom config, store config after you've changed the units. Um, if that doesn't work, what you can do again is like what we started at the very beginning. Oh, did I close that window? You can basically do a startup macro or you can do uh, just a macro up here. So you can start a new macro. You can set your transpose units, stop recording, just like an action script in Photoshop. Uh, and then you can hit that macro as a button that'll set your transpose units to different units, the types. Or if you wanted to start up with ZBrush, there's a way to do that. I guess I can look that up real quick again. Sorry about that. I closed it. Um, this guy will walk you through that process. Pretty straightforward. Give me a second. Give me a second. There we go. More comments. So Alexander has a video on that. 
there it is this one he will walk you through doing macros as well as saving it to your startup uh, is there a way to make a polygon selected all face the same direction like if they're on a sphere make polygons select all face in the same direction yeah that should be well on a sphere that can be a little bit tricky so we go to sphere 3d go into edit mode make poly mesh 3d and then you go in here and you want to select these polygons that are all facing the same way now these spheres are all facing slightly different directions so if we go over here to our poly groups here and we do uh, group by normals it's not going to do anything now, if you change the max slider down really low on this case, in fact, too low. Let's go here to uh, reconstruct. No, it's not going to do it. Let's go to the sphere 3D. We'll go to initialize here. And we'll change the divides way down to like 12 and 12. And then we'll hit make poly mesh 3D. Now, on this one, if we go over here to our poly groups here and we do group, oops, group by, I mean, you can do group front. No, group front based on your camera but we want to do group normals. Uh, again, it's not doing anything, but if you crank this max slider down until it ca starts catching those faces, those different angle directions, now it's going to, you're going to see these ones are all one poly group, and then these are all one poly group, de just depending on the normal angle. Um, so for a better example of that, if we go over here to initialize Q cube, and we just do a quick Z modeling here, Q mesh poly group all hit X. We'll just Q mesh these things out here here let's do q mesh poly loop here and then we can grab we can again we can just alt grab these things here we'll just q mesh poly group all so all the usual things we end up doing for our q mesh here so now what we can see is that when we go into q mesh there's a bunch of targets in here you can do flat island and that's just going to take this flat surface here let's turn off x and that'll just move um, this one island down this dude do, does this flat island if you do flat um, bu -bu 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 -bu, flat border flat poly group where's my poly loop and flat Oh, we can do in front. So now all of these ones, everything that's in front of this flat face, we can move up. Um, all of these, or we can Q mesh, sorry. Um, all of these ones that are in front of this one. So you can see if you go here, everything that's in front of this will be modified by the Q mesh. So you can use targets to uh, adjust to uh, adjust that stuff. Uh, so you're basically, with these targets here, you can do all these flat faces here across this section here. Q mesh. Um flat and poly group, uh, facing front island, facing front all. So we can do flat and poly group. And that'll go ahead and choose, you know, just these flat surfaces or all of these flat surfaces here, plus the poly group here. So it's taking it, it's looking at these and they're all on the same flat plane. And it's uh, taking the poly group out of this flat plane here. So we just do this one, it's gonna be flat and that one, flat and this one here. So using your targets, you can make selections based on the normal angles of your, object now like i said before the sphere isn't going to work that good because they're all kind of facing their own normal direction so it might be a little bit tougher but is there uh, again if i miss something just keep shouting it out although i gotta leave about five minutes now uh is there a way to use gizmo 3d uh to array a mesh in a circle fashion like a minigun yeah absolutely that's a fun one so uh, array mesh. So array mesh is awesome. So in fact, you know what? Let's take this thing. So we go over here to if you haven't used array mesh, check it out. It's totally cool. It's totally radical. So we can turn on array mesh, and this is just instances. Same thing as nano mesh. Only with array mesh, what we can do is we can do a repeat of like maybe 16, and we can go. I want to rotate this thing in the x amount. We can go. We can like rotate our objects around this way, or the y amount like this way. So we'll do y amount of 360 full circle, and they'll rotate around this way. Now, you might be like, well, that doesn't really help me a whole bunch. I want it to be like arrayed around a circle like this. So all you need to do is go to the pivot here and you can change um, where this pivot sets. Actually, let's hit Q here. Um, pivot, there we go. So we can change the pivot like this and then it'll array that way. Um, you can also go into transpose mode. And now when we hit W, we have a transpose line. And if you grab this little yellow one here, you can actually move that pivot on the fly. 
So you can kind of just adjust that exactly where you want that pivot to go. The cool thing about array mesh is because these are all instances, I can now go through and go, you know what? I want to slide, uh, let's see, slide, edge loop, complete, and we're going to slide this edge loop over. And as I'm doing this, it's updating the other one. So now I can go in here to like split point, and we'll go ahead and split this point and go to the bottom here. Actually, that's right, that edge loop doesn't cut. Okay, let's do this instead. We're going to go to insert single edge loop. We're going to put an edge loop right here in the middle and now we can go to split point. We'll split this point here and we'll split this point. All we got to do is tap. It'll inherit that same split value. We can go to Q mesh, polygroup all. You just push that straight down and now you can see all of my instances are updating here. Um, also another feature, if I hit control W, I'll make this all in polygroup and then if I hit make mesh, it's going to make these all into one mesh so now that they're all, they're all geometry. One feature of that, save, save, save. There we go. I should probably turn that off if I'm demoing. Um, a feature of that is if I go over here and I make this all a polygroup. Now, if I start dragging and then let go, it'll just paint whatever that polygroup is. So now I can go over here, start alt dragging and then paint. So if I have a polygroup on both sides, what it's going to do when I hit make mesh, it's going to bridge those. And the reason it's doing that is I have extrude on. Now you're going to see when I hit make mesh and I bridge, it's going to skip this one. That's because I need to turn on close. So now you can use that as a feature as well if you want to have polygroups on two different sides to go ahead and uh, arrange that for you. So, uh, but if you don't, you can turn off close and extrude and then when you make mesh, it'll completely just ignore that. Um, you can also hit D for dynamic preview and you kind of see what that's gonna do. You can change your crease tolerance down and now we can just manually go through here with our Z modeler brush, crease, edge, and we can just like alt tap these ones here just to kind of get uh, the look we're kind of going for here like so. So you can kind of modify these things on the fly and because again, it is just instances you can just modify this however you want it's pretty cool uh, you can also stack these things so we can go in here we can append a new and now we have a new stage so for this one what we can do is I'll hit transpose and not just the pivot but we can also use transpose to move this thing so now we have another stage now we can move this thing over this way and we can say you know what I want to do um, maybe seven repeats of this thing and while um, while it's repeating, I can use move, I can use, I can hit E to scale, and now I can scale them up as they repeat. And I can rotate them, I can hit R, and I can rotate them as I repeat. Of course, now we can hit W and kind of move these things out, and just kind of move these things around as well. Um, and you can also do that over here. You can go move, scale, rotate, offset, all this stuff is kind of built into here as well. But um, you can just, and, and again, while this is all available to you, you're like, you know what? I want to actually make this a DynaMesh. So let's go ahead and just do a quick DynaMesh out of this mesh. Whoa. What did it do? Give me a second. Oh, there it goes. So we go into solo mode here. Now, when I did DynaMesh, it made these things really a lot heavier. So it's kind of slowed it down a little bit. Let's go ahead and DynaMesh with a slightly lower resolution here. You just got to be aware that when you're going through here, in fact, we can just turn array mesh off temporarily if you want to just kind of go in here and sculpt. Update. There we go. So we'll turn array mesh back on. And now if we just want to sculpt on these things, we can go through here. Oh, you know what? Do I, I still have dynamic turned on. That's why. So it's dynameshing and also if I go here to geometry, dynamics turned on. That's why it's really slowed down. So now we can go through here and we can use dynamesh to sculpt on our object here. And it's just propagating out to all those different stages of our geometry here. We can also go, you know what? I don't want stage two anymore. Let's go ahead and delete that one. So now we just have stage one that we're kind of using as dynamesh here. Now we can go to like brush, insert, body parts, and then grab a hand, put that hand on there, dynamesh that together, and now we've got weirdo thing. Uh, one of the super, uh, uh, Jonas asks, how do you deselect alt selection on Z modeler? Oh, um, that one is an issue. So take a sphere 3D, make poly mesh 3D. So if we go through here and we're holding down alt and we're kind of painting a selection, and we're like, oh, I didn't want that last one. You can just alt tap it and that'll make it a new poly group. And then you can just grab these two poly groups, make it all one poly group if you want to, and then you can keep alt dragging. Um, another thing you might not be aware of, if you hold down alt and you start painting and you let go of alt, it'll switch all of those poly groups to this one um, poly group. Now I can continue painting with, whoops, and continue painting with this and then letting go and it'll just keep painting with this. Now, if let's say, oh, you know what? I want to paint with pink now. You can hold down alt, start painting on the pink and then um, tap shift and that'll inherit the pink properties. And now you can just paint through um, 
with pink. So you can hold down Alt, start painting, and then let go of Alt, and now you can just kind of start painting with pink. The same thing is if you go in here, if you switch it to poly group, a single poly, uh, and then you can go through here and you can like, if you tap and then tap Alt, that'll cycle through a bunch of different poly groups. So we can do like this blue, and then you can just go through here and tap all these things at once. Same thing if you hold down Alt, start painting, and let go of Alt, it'll just start painting with that poly group. And it's like, oh crap, I want that to be pink. Just hold down Alt, start painting on the pink, hold down Shift, and it'll just inherit the pink. And then you can just alt, you can, uh, alt paint and then just do paint pink. As a, Another version of that would be to go, if I want to take this blue and put it in the middle here, you can go to poly group, single poly, tap, hold, shift, that'll inherit the blue, and then you can just go through here and make these blue. Alt is just a way to paint with that functionality. So now if I want this pink here, again, alt, start painting. Oh, I'm painting in blue. Tap uh, shift to inherit that pink poly group, and now I can just start painting with pink. Then again, I just hold down alt, start painting, and now I'm painting pink. That makes sense. <laughs> That's something you might want to, you just need to play with. Uh, 3D block out from 2D images, you use Z modeler for that. Yes, um, whenever I do weapon modeling and I have a 2D side frame, I'll go through a whole tutorial on that later on where I take a, a sheet of weapons and I just extrude those out um, just to kind of get stuff uh, done quickly. So that'll have to be another time. I'm gonna have to wrap it up. Um, so I'm sorry if I haven't gotten to your question yet. I need to make a stopping point here. Um, show up next Thursday or this Tuesday on Pixelogic's channel. I can I can hit up any of these things. Um, we did talk about, if you go back through this when it posted to YouTube, but as soon as I'm done, you can, uh, D Diogo, uh, we did talk about the edge extend and extrude. So you can, but not probably the way you're thinking of. Cool. Uh, there's not a way to open a Zebras 4R8 file with 4R7. What you can do is go in and you can export under pro, da, 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 Z plugin. What you can do is if you have a bunch of subtools and a bunch of poly paint and a bunch of uh, that kind of stuff, it'll, it won't keep your subdivision history, but you can always reconstruct. You can go to FBX export and you can export your Z tool out as a bunch of different files. It'll keep your naming of your subtools, it'll keep your creasing, I think, it'll keep your poly groups, it'll keep your poly paint. Um, it won't keep your subdivision history, but again, like I said, you can reconstruct that. Cool. All right. Um, do you think live booling will change the current workflow of doing a lot of these on programming like Substance Painter using alphas? Uh, depends on if, if, if the details change the silhouette of the object. I wouldn't do that in Painter, but if it's, or you could do it in Displacement if you want to paint Displacement. But <clears throat> as far as like little stampy details, I like to still do that in Painter because it's less destructive. Like if I do it in ZBrush, even if it's live Boolean, and then I bake that to a low res, <clears throat> and then I want to make changes like to the height or to the placement, in Painter, all I need to do is take that layer height and just adjust that on the fly. Uh, but in ZBrush, I'd have to go back in, make changes, save it back out, rebake it to my low res, throw it in the Painter, that's kind of a lot of work. So depending on the type of greeble detail or the type of detail you're putting on there, it's a lot less destructive just doing the texture. Um, yes, Luther, if you go through this right here about setting your default, you can use um, start Z Startup Master, Google that, or you can go through this and set a custom macro that'll do it on startup as well. Cool. All righty. I will see y'all later. Catch you next week or Tuesday on Pixelogic's channel, Thursday on this channel. Uh, you guys have a good day.